Listen up for a cycle company, it's Captain Whiplash here playing some XCOM 2 Long War. It has come to my attention that other members of the company are going to try and give this game a whirl since it's been on sale lately. So I thought I'd make a little battle tutorial and see if I can help them along on their first mission. Obviously this is the first mission, Operation Gate Crasher. So we're going to roll in and I've noticed that there are probably a lot of people you don't recognize. That's because it starts off from your character pool. And I have a rather large character pool. But it's a bunch of people. I think the only recognizable faces in there are Shiloh and Austin. Now, the first thing you want to do is determine what part of the map you start off on. See, I have determined that I have started off in a corner of the map, so you can fan out from there. Now, Gray's widespread recon pattern is good for identifying a lot of enemies in a lot of areas, but I prefer to keep my soldiers closer together. So, now we've control. discovered a squad of enemy soldiers. Now, obviously, you have two movement points. If you move in the blue, that's one. If you move in the yellow, that's two. You want to try to stick to the blue as much as physically possible. But since I want to keep them all together and set up this ambush rather quickly before the enemy gets away, I'm bringing all my soldiers up to cover. Now, while you're doing this, you have to consider where enemy reinforcements are going to come from. Understood. Like, if there's, a, if there's an enemy squad close to the left flank of my squad right now, they would be internally fucked. So, you gotta weigh those options really well. Alright, this is good. They're coming really close, and as long as I keep them isolated, I can take them out really easy. Unfortunately, it doesn't look does not look like that's going to happen. These guys make so this is a problem. They, they have the high ground on me, and if they decide well to rain down fire from there, first of all, they've got a grenader and a machine gunner up there. So that's bad news for me. So instead of trying to ambush them all at once, I'm instead going to wait, Moving. make sure everyone has the fullest of cover, and hope that one of them, one of the squads, Veers off from the others. Overwatch, go overwatch. Overwatch, affirmative, covering that. All right, this is still good. They're very close. My soldiers will have a very good chance to hit, and if they stay clumped together like that, I can grenade them for extra damage. Once again, these people don't want me to have that. See, you may think. The more enemies I can ambush at once, the better. But you gotta realize, on your first mission, you're dealing with a bunch of rookies. So you gotta keep them in a tight formation and mask their firepower. So, this is still bad. Now we've got these guys coming down. If these guys veer to the right, and the other squad takes off, I feel like taking these guys out would be a much better much better for us because we could take out the grenader, the machine gunner, and the sentinel they have with them. So I'm gonna try and without being detected, I'm gonna try and move my soldiers into better positioning for a possible ambush of the second squad we ran into. Confirmed. No need to ask twice. Getting it done. Moving to a watch. Covering now. Scanning. Now if cards play right, these guys will disappear in the darkness and these other guys will come straight towards us. Once again, that doesn't look like it's gonna happen. So we're just gonna hold off on this. Like I said, if I had better soldiers, if I had 
machine gunners, grenadiers, and and infantry soldiers, I would I would chance this ambush if they got closer to me. But I'm not going to chance it with all these soldiers right now. Orders confirmed. So I'm going to keep them all in good cover and set up for an ambush down this alleyway. Now this alleyway is a very good spot to ambush because there's not a lot of cover for them to run. All right. Now, you ambush them by op by getting set up in an overwatch position. But if they have a piece of cover that they can run to that's in with, within like three blocks of where they're standing, your overwatch won't trigger. So like where those guys are right now, there's plenty of cover, them, cover for them to run to. I wouldn't risk taking that shot now. But it looks like we're about to get the separation we need. These guys are veering to the right and the other ones kept going forward. So we're going to reorient our ambush to ambush them if they come around this under the bridge section. Now I'm going to send a scout up first, I'm going to send Milo, and I'm going to keep him in the blue in case I have to pull him back. He spotted no enemy, so I'm going to go ahead and move him in the yellow. Like I said, keep to the blue as much as possible. But right now I've got to weigh my risk and reward by setting up this ambush really quickly before they come around this corner. Because I, I can already see their cone of vision right Solid there, copy. where they can see. So if I get these guys set up and Solid they get really copy. close to us, then we have a much better chance Understood. of hitting them. On the move. Now this does carry, like I said, this does carry some risk. If they come too close, none of my men are on Overwatch. Oh, looks like they're going straight out. So this is really good, and this is where we're going to take our opportunity. Now, I'm, like I said, if these were not rookies, I would examine each of their strengths and weaknesses, the and then come up about a way to maximize this ambush. But instead of doing that, since they're all rookies. I'm going to keep one person on reserve, that'll be Milo, in, my in case we need to move and make a flanking shot, and then I'm going to use uh, uh, Natsu here to throw a grenade at some of these guys. Now I want to make sure I get the guy that's veering off to the right first, so he doesn't have a chance to flank us. And grenade's dead, and everyone's damaged. So, and they've got nowhere to go except over that wall. Which, fortunately, they don't. Donald Trump takes a shot. Shadow takes a shot. And Austin takes a shot. And, they it down. and all three are dead, and that's how you do a proper ambush. Now, we don't need this guy anymore, therefore we're going to put him on Overwatch. And we're going to see if the enemy wants to counterattack. Uh-oh, looks like there's enemies over in that area. And there's, and there's going to be a sectoid. So we got to keep a mental note of that area over there, the while keeping the track of the other squad we saw earlier. <coughs> Alright, now now that we're in combat, they know where we are, we need to make extra sure that we are moving in the blue. See, this is where it gets tricky. This is where... This is where you lose, this is where you lose soldiers. So we're going to keep everyone moving in the blue, but first we're going to take out this zombie. Make sure that he doesn't get, get up and whack somebody. Again, Donald Trump with the sure shot. Let's review the record. Moving to position. Now... I'm weighing my risks and rewards very heavily here. I know we have a squad off to the left and a squad off to the right. Living Normally I say keep your soldiers in cover. On the move. But the reward here is I I'm going to keep them all very you. close together and I'm going to put them on overwatch. If enemies come into view, they'll take shots at them and the enemy will have to the enemy will have to take cover. Thereby not being able to fire the first turn we see them. And then next turn we can use our, our blue moves to get into better cover. See, now they're all in good position to get into better, into better cover positions. And I'm on it. they, you know, if these guys showed up, they could have shot at them. But now they're here and now we're in trouble. Because they have superior position and range on us. So one thing you've got to remember about XCOM is we're insurgents. We're not... We're not, we're not really an organized frontline fighting military. 
So I'm gonna pull all my soldiers back and make them come to us. Make them fly on our terms. Giving us more range on them so they can't have effective fire on us. We are going to build a great border wall. Now see, having these people in that, in that open position right there was very helpful because now I can pull them back and still put them in overwatch. I can pull back, I can push forward. But with all these rookies, I'm going to pull back and prepare to receive them on this end. Well. On the move. I am, but... Now unfortunately this drone is gonna take a couple shots. Hopefully yes. See, that's very unfortunate because it's often very hard to get those drones. They're a big waste of ammo. So here comes the Advent Officer. See, he's afraid to traverse the open ground. So he's dropping into Overwatch, which gives us the advantage. And the extreme range prevents them from being accurate on us. See, they missed both times. So now I've got, I've got options. It looked, I think they can only see Shiloh. So I'm gonna have to pull him back and take the overwatch fire, or not. We're so far away that their overwatch fire can't reach us. So now, once again, they have to come to us. And we've got superior positioning on them. So we're gonna send everyone to overwatch and prepare to take up three shots with them. Now, the number one way not to lose soldiers in XCOM is to not let your enemy fire back at you. You wanna kill them before they fire back. And that's not always an option. So you either want to fall back, Heading go into out. Overwatch, or you want to, um, or you want to inhibit their accuracy, either with flashbangs or suppression. See, here they come, and we're taking shots on them. Now, there's no what, no realistic way I can expect all these to hit, but they just marked Donald Trump. They are probably liberals. And Nazi was a pre pretty straight up shot right there. That guy was not the smartest mover. So there should be one more of them trying to come into our area. See, two missed shots, and now this guy gets a shot. So it's very important to take shots on their turn. You want to maximize the number of shots you can take on their turn. So when we're on our time, we can do something about them. Now, placing Milo up there was also a big risk. If there was enemies on the other side of that building, you know, we'd have a big problem because they'd be revealed to us. But now that the enemy has closed distance on us, we're going to close distance on them. We're going to bound up and prepare better shots. Now, I prefer to get everyone in position first before taking any shots. Because you could... I, I'll probably do this later in the video. But I'll take a dumb shot and realize one of my soldiers was in a position to take a better shot. So, also, it's good for rookies to maximize grenades. Our plan will put if you have it, use it. Burst. Now, this Advent Officer is in full cover, and that's going to be a problem. What I should have done immediately was use a grenade to clear his cover. Unfortunately, I instead take shots of Austin here. Grenade, out. So I decided to say, fuck your cover, and put you out in the open. And a good headshot by Lucy, and we're good to go. Now, I'm feeling pretty confident right now. I've just got two squads without... You know, without in without injury, and the sectoid is obviously back there. I know this, right? But I do something incredibly stupid. It, well, stupid, but m risk minimalizing. I, I should say. I want that loot. On your order. So I start moving everyone up in the blue, and I see that I have a blue right Fire. here. So I utilize that blue to grab that loot and run back. Unfortunately, that reveals two more aliens, a sectoid and a, um, and a sentry. Now, both of these units are pretty, are pretty damn dangerous, especially to rookies. 
Sectoids have panic, uh, psychosis, mind control. They can obviously reanimate corpses. And this is a nightmare to rookies. And the Advent Sentry can fire and then go on Overwatch. So they can move, fire, then go on Overwatch. And that makes them pretty freaking annoying. But I'm first going to take out this, this zombie. Now taking out zombies is sometimes a waste of ammo when you can take out a sectoid instead. But the sectoid's not in range. Target neutralized. Now I'm in a bit of a predicament. Trading Bertolt is up there and he's got, you know, the enemy in sight and no one to really cover. So I'm just going to have to hunker all my units down, hope the enemy moves up on us, and hope they don't destroy Scanning. my rookie up there. So it starts out looking promising. Milo got a grazing shot. Now, now we see why sick toys are such a big problem. Is he just mind controlled one of my men? Now at this point, you can shoot your guy, or just hope he's gonna shoot you in return. Luckily, if you disorient the sectoid, you can bring your soldier back under your control. So my only option here is to get one of my units over on the left side to throw a flashbang at the sectoid. Unfortunately, none of my units can see him, but I made a, me made a mental note about where he is. Heading out. So I'm going to risk this overwatch shot and try and get a flashbang in there. Success. Now this next part is a great testament to how quickly things can go downhill in the Long War II. Let's do this. So instead of pulling him back, I decide like to this. move him up and try and destroy the cover of the sentry. It doesn't work, but it does weaken him quite a bit. Unfortunately, he's now out of range of most of my units to support him. On the move. Now I make I make I almost make a huge mistake here. I put Lucy up here, hoping to get a elevated shot on this Advent Sentry. The shot's not worth it, so I gotta move her up to a, some better cover. Otherwise, she's gonna get flanked really freaking hard. Heading out. Right, I'm gonna put some guys into Overwatch, make Scanning. sure that we have moves. I did not expect that to hit. I would have been pleasantly surprised this if it had. Also, I didn't mention this Understood. before. Always reload your soldiers. N never send them forward about a full magazine. Because reload does cost a cost an action. Heading You'll out. notice before I started moving my soldiers up to counterattack that first squad, I made sure the ones that need reloads all got them. Overwatch. Now I'm hoping the sentry will either fall back or try and push up, but it does not happen. And there goes my flawless victory that I would have had. And two of our rookies just panicked, and now Dumb Nick comes out. I start making mistake after mistake here. Now. Both these, both these units are pretty weak, and I have, I have um, good intel that says they're the last units on the field. I so I'm going to try and take them out quickly before our rookie over there bleeds out. Starts off promising. I get a good shot on the sectoid. Barely hit. Weapons burning ammo fast. And then Long War II decides it is time to take its blood toll. Here's what I was talking about. If I had thrown a grenade first, I could have saved a lot. I could have saved a couple moves trying to take out that sentry. Now all we gotta do is kill that sectoid. And we gotta do it really, really quickly. Otherwise, we're gonna lose a soldier. Got it covered. Perfect. 
Now, unfortunately, this sectoid is having a pretty good day. Is here I decide that I need to rush this sectoid to end, end the game quickly. Unfortunately, Shiloh can't shoot for shit. And no one's, and like, very few people have grenades left. I'm on it. Alright, see this is looking pretty promising. One health sectoid. This should be pretty easy to deal Moving with. To position. And I start taking all sorts of stupid risks to make it happen. Miss the target. I need ammo. Ay ay ay. Not even close. There you have it. Monitor There's a dead sectoid, and that's Area the first secured. operation cleared Status confirmed. using guerrilla warfare tactics. And we have no casualties. 